When it comes to baking, I'm better watching people do it on TV than I am actually baking in the kitchen. It's not that I can't follow directions or use measuring tools, I just get hung up with all the waiting. Sure, cookies are like a 12 minute wait, but cakes can be like a half hour. <laughs> and baking bread, waiting for the dough to rise, waiting for the bread to cook, waiting for all the cooked bread to cool, I mean, you could be talking about hours. Yeah, that's a long time to be patient. It's just easier to go to the bakery or the grocery store getting a loaf of bread that's super tasty and already baked. But being patient isn't just something we need when we bake. After all, doesn't it seem like we're faced with waiting for something or someone all the time? Even this past year, the world has been waiting to get back to normal from having to shelter in place, put off getting together and waiting to travel again. Everywhere you look, people are waiting. That's why we're taking this month to discover more about patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. When you are patient, you show that you trust that waiting is better than hurrying to get it done. We're hoping that kids learn the value of patience, not only with what they're waiting for, but also with themselves as they learn to wait well. In the Bible, we can see all sorts of stories and principles that help us discover the importance of discovering how to be patient. Some might even say that the entire story of the Bible is a lesson in patience. Not because it takes so long to read from cover to cover, but because we read about lots of people who are waiting for promises to come true, for God to speak, for the rescuer to arrive. That's why we kick off March with the story we often hear told at Christmas. God promised his people that he'd send a savior, but after hundreds of years, people must have been losing faith, but not Simeon. God promised Simeon that he'd get to see the Messiah before he died. We believe that Simeon waited a long time, but finally, when Mary and Joseph came to the temple with baby Jesus, Simeon finally saw what he'd been waiting for. Having patience can be difficult, but we're not alone while we wait. Bottom line, when you have to wait, remember God is with you. Next, we'll head to Exodus and find out what happens when Moses leaves the Israelites to wait at the base of Mount Sinai. Rather than waiting patiently for Moses to come down off the mountain, the entire nation of Israel rebelled. They built a golden calf and began to worship it instead of worshiping God. And because of their lack of patience, God judged the entire nation. If only they had remembered how God rescued them from Egypt and trusted him while they waited. Bottom line, when you have to wait, remember what's true. For week three, we head to Genesis where we find one of the best examples of what happens when you are not patient. The story of Esau. After a hunting trip, Esau was exhausted and hungry. And when you know, his brother Jacob had a pot of stew cooking on the fire. Jacob takes advantage of the situation and offers a bowl in exchange for Esau's inheritance. Turns out, Esau couldn't resist. He lost something extremely valuable all because he was impatient. We pray kids start thinking about what they could miss out on by not waiting. Bottom line, if you don't wait, it could cost you. We finished the month on Palm Sunday, which just so happens to have something to do with patience and waiting. Like we said, God promised a savior, a Messiah that would rescue them and become king. By this time, the promise was hundreds of years old, but then Jesus showed up. Many believed that he was the promised savior after years of waiting. God's promises were finally coming true. So when he entered Jerusalem on a donkey, just like the prophecy foretold, they celebrated and worshiped Jesus. Of course, it all turned out very different from what they expected, and they'd have to wait a bit longer to understand. But they could find joy because God was faithful. Bottom line, you can celebrate even when you're waiting. While we're discovering more about patience, we'll memorize Psalm 27:14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Thankfully, we don't have to wait in our own power. Our hope is in God. He will give us the strength to remember that it's worth the wait. This month, whether you're trying your hand at baking or just waiting for the world to get back to some sort of normal, we pray that you trust God to give you what you need to wait well. Who knows? you may just find that what you experience was worth the wait.
everyone. My name is Graham. I'm dressed like this because I want to know what it feels like to be a real chef. I want to be able to bake a cake that's as tall as me. I want to make chocolate chip cookies that are so gooey the chocolate stretches a full six feet. I want to understand what fondant is. Fondant? Fondant? I want to be able to say the word fondant. But like most things in life, becoming a real chef takes time. It takes patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I know a thing or two about patience. I signed up for a baking class six weeks ago that wasn't supposed to start until today. So I have to wait. And today I found out that the class has been postponed for another two weeks because our teacher is sick. It looks like she's going to be okay, but Still, I have to wait some more. So now I'm wondering, what if I never get to go to class? What if it gets postponed again and again and again? What if it stays this way forever? forever. The longer I have to wait, the harder it gets. If only there was some way to make the waiting not feel so hard. <laughs> Maybe there is a way. In today's story, we'll learn about a guy named Simeon who had to wait a long time for God to keep his promise. But Simeon didn't have to wait alone. So, I guess I'll see you soon. I'll just wait here. Oh man, I could really go for one of those gooey chocolate chip cookies right about now. Mmm, chocolate. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God 
and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. And one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. The temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's spirit led Simeon straight up to the temple mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard, allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. Hey, Neil, do you want to go and play on the playground? No. I can grow up to be But right now I 
I don't want to miss, don't want to miss what's awaiting here for me. Looking all around me, I got everything I need. I'm not going to rush because I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm living in the moment with my hopes and all my dreams. I'm not going to rush because I'm right where I'm supposed to be. To be a little bigger I wanna be an actor on the big screen I can't wait to be a little taller I wanna be the captain of the team So many things that I can grow up to be But right now I, I don't wanna miss Don't wanna miss what's awaiting here for me Looking all around me I got everything I need I'm not gonna rush cause I'm right where I'm supposed to be I'm living in the moment With my hopes and all my dreams I'm not gonna rush cause I'm right where I'm supposed to be Oh, So don't waste the days, don't hurry them up Life isn't a race, it's a journey to trust Don't waste the days, don't hurry them up Life isn't a race, it's a journey to trust Oh, 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 looking all around me I got everything I need I'm not gonna rush cause I'm right where I'm supposed to be 